29th of 1929, Black Tuesday hit Wall Street. 16 million shares got traded on a single day. Billions of dollars were lost into oblivion. Thousands of investors were immediately busted. This sent America into a downward spiral. Half of America's banks failed. Employment would skyrocket as 15 million people were out of work. Just as America hit rock bottom, the mafia took over. A war would begin in the streets of Brooklyn as Salvatore Maranzano and Joe Massaria would go to war over turf and control of organized crime in the city. Lucky Luciano saw things differently as he felt that old world values had become cliche. Luciano's point of view was simple. Money was the bottom line and as long as two old world men were going to war, everyone was suffering. Luciano believed that ethnicity had no bearing on business and that everyone was equal in the streets. Luciano would combine forces and move on both Maranzano and Masseria. Both would be killed in a hail of gunfire, and Luciano would take over the mafia. He would then establish a commission and five family bosses to control New York City and the United States. Because murder and mayhem had controlled the streets and impacted business for so long, Luciano needed a way to control it. Meyer Lansky, who had ran the Jewish mob, joined forces with Lucky Luciano. The history went back to childhood when Luciano tried to stick up Lansky, who refused to give an inch to Luciano. Luciano recognized Lansky's resolve, and the two would form a bond that lasted over 40 years. Lansky would suggest that they form a hit squad to take care of any issues that needed lead resolution. Lansky suggested that they combine Italians and the Jewish mob to oversee murders. To ensure fairness, Luciano would appoint Albert Anastasia and Louis Lepke to oversee any murder contracts. Lepke would eventually hand his position over to Jacob Gura Shapiro. Murder Incorporated would operate out of the Midnight Rose Candy Store, which was located on the corner of Saratoga and Livonia Avenue in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Each member of Murder Incorporated would be paid retention salaries and freelancer fees, anywhere from $1,000 to $6,000 per murder, depending on the details. To outsiders, it was just a normal candy store. But inside, Rosie Gold, who was the front owner of the Midnight Rose candy store, she kept a tight lip. Behind a facade was a room filled with payphones. Members of Murder, Inc. could be found hovering in and outside of the store, sipping malts while waiting for the payphones to ring with a new murder contract. One of the most prolific hitmen was Harry Pittsburgh Phil Strauss, who is said to have killed 100 men on his own. As legend has it, Strauss once walked into a packed movie theater with an axe and bludgeoned a man to death. In 1935, once revered gangster Dutch Schultz was on the outs with the mob. He had requested permission to kill Thomas Dewey, a New York City prosecutor who wouldn't leave the mob alone. Luciano and the commission denied Schultz's request. Schultz then told them that he would do whatever the fuck he wanted. Fearing Schultz would kill Dewey, fearing massive heat from law enforcement, Murder Inc. members Charles the Bug Workman and Mendy Weiss were contracted. Schultz would be killed on October 24th of 1935 when Weiss and Workman walked into the Palace Chop House in Newark, New Jersey and lit the room up, killing Otto Berman, Abe Landau, Lulu Rosecrantz, and Dutch Schultz. In January of 1940, police informant Harry Rudolph was held as a witness to the murder of Alex Alpert, who was a 19-year-old mafia up-and-comer. Albert would be killed in Brownsville, Brooklyn on November 25th of 1933. But years later, Harry Rudolph would be sequestered by the police and he would give up information. He would finger Murder, Inc. members Abe Ellis and Martin Goldstein and Anthony Maffatori. All three would be indicted and all three men would become federal cooperators for the government. Abe Ellis would finger some three dozen more men. As a result of of Rellis informing Harry Myone, Frank Abandando, Harry Strauss, Martin Goldstein, Louis Lepke Buckhalter, Mendy Weiss, 
and Louis Capone would all be executed. Relis's next target would be Albert Anastasia, but he would seriously underestimate Albert Anastasia's resolve. Abe Relis and the FBI would miscalculate the anger, the power, and the determination of Albert Anastasia. On the morning of November 12, 1941, with police guarding his door, Abe Relis allegedly falls from a six-story window to his death at the Half Moon Hotel. Police would find a makeshift rope made out of bedsheets. This is the same morning that he was supposed to testify against Albert Anastasia. Even though a grand jury in 1951 would conclude that Abe Relis died accidentally, it's long been noted that the cops were paid off and actually threw Relis out of the window. In the end, Relis could sing, but he couldn't fly. The murder of Abe Brellis would be the last murder that Murder, Inc. would carry out. Prosecution tactics were changing, and the mob was evolving into something else. It's been estimated that Murder, Incorporated carried out between 100 to over 1,000 contracted murders. If ever in New York, and you want to see where Murder, Inc. was located, and where they did business, all you have to do is head to the corner of Saratoga and Livonia Avenue in Brownsville, Brooklyn. The candy store front may be gone. There may be new tenants in the building. But you can visit the ghosts of Murder, Inc.'s past.